Love it, it's our home. And you wish to enter your brother here at the sanitarium for treatment. Your brother's name? Is. Oh. Mrs. Simmons, what is your brother's name? I'm sorry. This is not easy for any of us. I'll have to hold my head up and go on just the same. That's what I keep telling Myrtle, and that's what Myrtle Bay keeps telling me. She's heartbroken about her uncle, Elwood. Elwood P. Dowd. That's it. Elwood P. Dowd. His age? 47 on the 24th of last April. He's Taurus. Taurus the bull. I'm a Leo and Myrtle's on a cusp. 47. Is he married? No, Elwood has never married. He stayed with Mother. He was always a great homeboy. He loved his home. You have him with you now? He's in a taxi cab down in the driveway. I gave the driver a dollar to watch him, but I didn't tell the man why. You can't tell these things to perfect strangers. Mr. Wilson, would you step down to a taxi cab in the driveway and ask him, Mr. Dowd, if you would be good enough to step up to room number 24, South Wing G? I ask him. This is his sister, Mrs. Simmons. How do... Why, certainly. Be glad to escort him. Thank you. The rates here, Mrs. Simmons. You'll find them printed on one of these cards. That will all be taken care of by my mother's estate, the late Marcella Penny Dowd. Judge Gaffney's our attorney. Now I'll see if Dr. Sanderson can see you. Dr. Sanderson? I want to see Dr. Chumley himself. Oh, Mrs. Simmons, Dr. Sanderson is the one that sees everybody. Dr. Chumley sees no one. He's still the head of this institution, isn't he? He's still a psychiatrist, isn't he? Still a psychiatrist? Dr. Chumley is more than that. He is a psychiatrist with a national reputation. Whenever people have mental breakdowns, they at once think of Dr. Chumley. That's his office, isn't it? You march right in there and tell him that I wish to speak to him. He knows who's in here. He'll come out here. Oh, I wouldn't dare disturb him, Mrs. Simmons. I would be discharged if I did. Well, I don't like to be pushed off onto any second fiddle. Dr. Sanderson is nobody's second fiddle. He's young, of course, and he hasn't been out of medical school very long. But Dr. Chelly tried out 12 and kept Dr. Sanderson. He's really wonderful. To the patients. Very well. Tell him I'm here right away. Six foot one and a half. Oh, heavens knows I ought to 
No, he's been around the house long enough. Now, Miss Simmons, let me understand. Do I have to keep repeating myself? My brother insists that his closest friend is a big white rabbit. This rabbit is named Harvey. Harvey lives at our house, don't you understand? You and Elle would go every place together. Elle would buy his barrel tickets and theater tickets for the both of them. As I said to Myrtle May, if your uncle was so lonely, he had to go and bring something home. Why couldn't it be something human? He has me, doesn't he? He has Myrtle May, doesn't he? Doctor? I'm going to tell you something I've never told anybody else in the world before. Every once in a while, I see that big white rabbit myself. Now, isn't that terrible? I've never even told that to Myrtle May. And what's more? Now, don't tell anybody I told you that, Doctor. I'm ashamed of it. I can see that you've been under a great nervous strain recently. Well, I certainly have. Grief over your mother's death depressed you considerably. Nobody knows how much. You're losing sleep. How can anybody sleep with that going on? Short tempered over trials. Oh, you just try living with those two. See how your temper holds up. <laughs> Most of that. How can anybody eat at a table with my brother and a big white rabbit while I'm finished with it? I'll sell the house. Be appointed conservator of Elvis' estate. And then Myrtle May and I will be able to entertain our friends in peace. It's just too much, Doctor. I can't stand it. Oh, of course it is, Miss Simmons. Of course it is. You're tired. Yes, I am. You've been worrying a great deal. I have. I, I can't help it. You know, I'm going to help it. Doctor. Uh, just wait here. I'll be right back. Oh, I'll just go down to the cabin. Get all these things. Why didn't somebody answer the buzzer? I didn't hear you, Doctor. I rang and rang. Uh, Miss Simmons? Sal and Wilson, the poor one must not leave the grounds. She's made with a getaway hot dog. Your condition is serious. Go after her. I can't believe it. Main gate, Henry. Dr. Sanderson. Henry, allow no one out of the main gate. We're looking for a patient. <laughs> Shouldn't have left him alone. But somebody didn't answer the buzzer. Wilson wasn't south, Doctor. It'll be available, Miss Kelly. Number 13, Upper West R is ready, Doctor. Have him taken there immediately. I'll prescribe preliminary treatment. I must contact your brother. Dow. I would be down. But doctor, I didn't know it was the woman who needed the treatment. She said it was for her brother. Of course she did. It's the oldest dodge in the world. I'm always used by the cunning type of psychopath. She apparently knew the brother was about to commit her, so she came to discredit him. Get him on the telephone, please. But doctor, I thought the woman was all right. So I had Wilson take the brother up to room number 24. He's there now. You had Wilson take the brother in? Come on, Miss Kelly. No gags. Please. You're not serious, are you? Oh, I did, Doctor. I did. Oh, Doctor, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, well, if you're sorry, that fixes everything. Oh, no. I'll do it, Doctor. I'll do it. Miss Dunphy, will you please unlock the door to room number 24 and give Mr. Down his clothes and... Uh, ask him to step down to the office right away. Ask him to step down to the office right away. There's been a terrible mistake, and Dr. Sanderson wants to explain... Hey, explain! Apologize! Thank heaven they hadn't put him in a hydro tub yet. She'll let him out. Beautiful. And dull, too. It's almost too good to be true. Doctor, I feel terrible. I didn't know. Judge Gaffney called and said Mrs. Simmons and her brother would be out here. And when she came out here, you don't have to be sarcastic. Oh, don't I? <clears throat> Listen, stop worrying. I'll squirm out of it in some way. Where are you going? I've got to tell the truth about it, Kelly. He may want to handle this himself. He'll be furious. I know he will. He'll die. And then he'll terminate me. The responsibility is all mine, Miss Kelly. Oh, no. Tell him it was all my fault, Doctor. I'll never even mention your name. Except for my sleep. Put this man down. Don't let him get away. I'll be right back. But what shall I say to him? What shall I do? He'll be furious. Look, Miss Kelly, he's probably fit to be tied. But he's a man, isn't he? I guess so. His name is Mr. Well then, you go into your old routine. You know, the eyes, the swish, the works. I'm immune to it. But I've seen it work on some Some of those patients out there. Now you get him down here, Kelly. Even if you have to do a strip tease. Well, uh, oh, uh, oh, you're wonderful, Dr. Sanderson. You're just about the most wonderful person I ever met in my life. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> How about giving me a lift here, Justice Sin? What? That Simmons dame. Did you catch her? Slick as a whistle. 
She was coming along the path, humming a little tune, when I jumped at her from behind a tree. And I said, sister, there's a man wants to see you. Should have heard her yell. She's wacky, all right. Take her to number 13, Upper West Arm. She's there now. Just brought her through the diet kitchen. I'll hold her down if he'll just come and undress her. Just a second, Wilson. Dr. Sanderson told me to stay here until her brother comes down. Make it snappy. You're Mr. Dowd? Oh, and Pete. I'm Miss Kelly. Let me give you one of my cards. <gasps> you should want to call me. Call me at this number. Don't call me that one because that's the old one. Thank you. Perfectly all right. And if you lose it, don't worry. I have plenty more. Won't you have a chair, please, Mr. Dow? I'll have two. Allow me. Dr. Sanderson is very anxious to talk to you. He'll be here in a minute. Please be seated. After you, my dear. Oh, I really can't, thank you. I'm in and out all the time. But you mustn't mind me. Please sit down. After you. Can I get you a magazine to look at? Oh, I'd much rather look at you, my dear. If you don't mind. You really are quite lovely. Oh, well, thank you. Some people don't seem to think so. Well, some people are blind. That is often brought to my attention. Now, I would like you to meet a very dear friend of mine. Oh, Mr. Dow? L.O.P. Let me give you one of my cards. I am Dr. Lyman Sanders. Dr. Chomley's assistant out here. Well, that's very good for you. I'm happy to know that. How are you, Dr. Sanderson? That's going to depend on you, my friend. Won't you be seated? You've met Miss Kelly. Yes, yes, I've had that honor. Now, I want both of you to be a very dear friend of mine. Uh, later on. I'm glad to. Please be seated. Well, after Miss Kelly. Sit down, Kelly. <laughs> Is that chair quite comfortable, Mr. Dow? Well, yes, would you care to try it? <laughs> Is it too warm in here for you, Mr. Dow? Would you like me to open a window? Mr. Dow, <laughs> Dr. Sanderson wants to know if you should open up a window? Well, I wouldn't presume to live this life for him. <laughs> now then, Mr. Dow, I can see that you're not the type of guy to be taken in by any high flown phrases or beating around the bush. Oh. Is that so, Doctor? <laughs> you have a sense of disadvantage here. You know it. We know it. Let's lay the cards on the table. That certainly appeals to me, Doctor. The best way in the long run, people are people, no matter where you go. That is very often the case. And being human are therefore liable to mistakes. <laughs> Miss Kelly and I have made a mistake here this afternoon, Mr. Dow. And we'd like to explain it to you. It wasn't Dr. Sanderson's fault, Mr. Dow. It was mine. A human failure. As I said. I find it very interesting, nevertheless. You and Miss <laughs> Kelly here. This afternoon, you say? We do hope you'll understand, Mr. Dowd. Oh, yes, yes. This is all from the basis of a long and warm friendship. And the responsibility is, of course, not hers, but mine. You're out too big old-fashioned, Doctor. But I like it. Now, if I would have seen your sister first, that would be an entirely different story. Now, now, now. There you surprise me. I think the world in all of you to put... Suppose you see her day. No, oh, you cannot attach any blame to her. She's a very sick woman. Came in here insisting you were in need of treatment. That's perfectly ridiculous. Vita well, shouldn't feel that way. I get along just fine. Exactly. But she had already talked to Miss Kelly, and there'd been a call from your family lawyer, Judge Gaffney. Oh, yes, no one. No one's like too. Nice people. Your sister was extremely nervous and plunged right away into the heated tirade on your drinking. That was Vita. She became hysterical. Vita shouldn't feel that way. I'll take care of that. Oh, exactly. But your sister. So crazy about your drinking. Does your sister drink, Mr. Dow? No, Doctor. No. I don't think Vita has ever taken a drink. Well, I'm going to surprise you. I believe she has and does. Constantly. Well, I'm certainly surprised. But it's not her alcoholism that's going to be the basis for my diagnosis. It's when she began talking so emotionally about a big white rabbit. Hmm. Harvey. I believe she called him Harvey. Harvey is his name. She can't go persecuting her with this rabbit. Well, Fia shouldn't feel that way. I will persecute her with Harvey. Well, now, before we go any further, oh, let me make my point first, Mr. Dow. This trouble of your sister's did not spring up overnight. Her condition stems from trauma. From what? From trauma. It's spelled T R A U M A. It means shock. There's nothing unusual about it. There's birth trauma, the shock to the act of being born. Now, that's the one we never seem to get over. <laughs> you have a nice sense of humor, Mr. Dow. Hasn't you, Miss Kelly? Oh, yes, Doctor. <laughs> May I say the same about both of you? So, to sum it all up, your sister's condition is serious, but I can help her. 
She must, however, remain out here temporarily. I've always thought Fee should have everything she needs. Exactly. But I wouldn't want her to stay out here. She liked it out here and wanted to stay here. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Did Wilson get what he went after? Yes, Doctor. What was Miss Simmons' attitude? Not unusual, Doctor. Mr. Dow, if this were an ordinary delusion, something reflected on the memory picture, other words, if she were seeing something that she had seen once before, that would be one thing. This is far more serious. It stands to reason that no one has ever seen a white rabbit six feet high. Not very often, Doctor. I like you, Dad. <laughs> I like you too, Dr. Samson. And Miss Kelly here. I like her too. Uh oh She must stay out here temporarily. Under these circumstances, I will commit my own grandmother. Does your grandmother drink too? 